big on America. You are fake news. Last call. Last, last, last call. Last call. Let, 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 let. Our next guest that's coming in here, I am super excited uh, to meet here. Um, he is Sam Lawrence. He's running for state um, state rep, I think, in Ohio's 47th in the great state of OH. I O. There it is. There it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And Jr., yeah. feel free to hang out if you want. I mean, I don't think we're kicking you off, so you're you're free okay. to hang around if you want to. Yeah, I, I I can hang out for another fifteen minutes. Sam, how you doing? I'm doing good, Jr. How are you, my man? Ah, oh, man, it's been exhausted. You you uh, you know you got a district, I got a whole state. Yeah, so, yeah, man. So <laughs> it's it's been it's been hectic, but I I followed your race a little bit, and I love what you're talking about, brother. I love your energy, your passion. We need people like you. To, to get in there and fight the system. Uh, so I like what I'm hearing so far, and I, I'm looking forward to hearing you tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, except, except one thing, brother, you're 19. You better have some damn energy, okay? Because you ain't got no excuse, <laughs> all right? I know. I'm at the age where I need my knees to help me get up. Yeah. Ah, I make sounds now when I sit I, down. I, I better be but. Nor- but door knocking with you and, like, you running, and I'm like, yeah. Hi. And then, oh, run. I thought Sam they said down the run, street like 40. Run. <laughs> it helps to be 19. It certainly helps. I would imagine so. I remember those days. <laughs> Guys, Sam, tell us a little bit about just about the, the state of the race and, and kind of like uh, who you're running against and, and what it's kind of been like just being 19. I remember when I was 19, I was back in the 60s. Was, <laughs> yeah, the, those are those. I guess it was like late 2000s. But uh, I was not um, I was not running for office, we'll say. Uh, just kind of tell us a little bit about your story, who you're running against, and why you decided to run. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Laura and Jason, thank you so much for having me on. I've been trying to get on here for a while, so I'm glad it finally happened. Um, but yeah, I, I would why? love to talk a little bit about um, <laughs> myself. So I grew up uh, in Ohio. So again, I'm 19 years old. I actually recently started my, uh, I'm a, actually classes start tomorrow for my sophomore year uh, here at Miami University, which Miami of Ohio. So we're down in Oxford. Uh, I reside in Butler County, which is the county right above Cincinnati, Southwest Ohio, um, I decided to get into this race for a sad reason and a good reason. The sad reason is that nobody else was planning on running in this race, which is a terrible, terrible reality that so many races across the country are facing, whether that be state rep like mine, whether you go down and go to township trustees, school board, there are so many positions, winnable positions uh, being left unfilled. The second reason is because I've, I've grown up uh, getting into politics, seeing how this really affects and shapes people's lives. And my observation was always Generation Z and young people have been left behind by the policies that are being enacted. Uh, You take Ohio for an example and you look at the insane, the insane uh, legislation that is passing through Columbus right now. It is simply insane. And and frankly, uh, to call it anything else than that is is just wrong. And frankly, these are the policies that are going to be affecting me, my life. They're going to be affecting uh, how I live again, uh, when you're looking at climate change, an issue like that is so existential, that issue, um, is going to last way longer than some of these politicians who are legislating on them right now. So I think it's time for us to really promote this fresh new voice who's focused on common sense issues. Um, and you swore, so I'm going to swore getting shit done, uh, and really (laughs) people where they are and not playing the petty political games. So, Uh, I'm actually running against an incumbent. Her name is Sarah Carruthers. She's running for a third term. Uh, So to give you a little backstory on my dear friend, Sarah, she got into politics. Is she a Republican or a Democrat? Republican. She's she's a Republican. Uh, I made it through through the primary unopposed. That was a nice luxury to have. Um, So Sarah, um, uh, a year ago during the height of COVID, she attempted to push uh, $300 million worth of nursing home legislation through the state house uh, in the form of a blank check. 
when we looked into this a little more, it was revealed that not four weeks later, she received a total of $52,000 from the four biggest nursing home liaisons in the state of Ohio. You don't four say. That's no. contributions. Shocking. Well, what a coincidence. Yeah, yeah. What a coincidence is what we said. And luckily, there have been stories. There are transcripts of calls. This is on the airwaves, and we are blasting it. I know you guys, uh, you guys all know who I am, but Sarah does not have the type of pull we have, not just on social media. She's not out knocking doors. She's barely campaigning. She won't debate me, even though I've extended the invite multiple times. And again, I am a 19-year-old college student, so I think that speaks a little more to her character than it does to mine. But essentially, I want to serve the people here. That's what I, that's, I think that's what I was born to do. I've wanted to run a campaign for a very long time and getting into this, meeting all of these people in Oxford and Hamilton that really have been affected by some of the things Sarah has legislated on. That's what spurred me to get into this race. And it's been amazing so far. I've met a million bajillion people. Um, I, as I know you guys know, our outreach is looking incredible and we really have a shot to flip this district. Yeah. And, you know, one of the cool parts about it is, is, you know, Ohio's one of those states that I think is really people know when it comes to presidential elections, but they're because uh, like Republicans can't win without Ohio. Right. That's the narrative. Uh, but there is a lot of Democrats doing awesome work in Ohio. And I think one of those um, for me is Sherrod Brown. I know you got to to meet him recently. What was that like? Well, first of all, Sherrod is my favorite senator, uh, and meeting him was surreal, and it was even more surreal three weeks later when he opted to endorse me. Um, so we have Senator Brown's support, which, again, I grew up idolizing this man. I, I absolutely adore him, and so for him to be supporting us is, is just uh, – it, it's beyond words for me to describe, but – I think that goes to show there are Democrats in Ohio doing the work, getting on the ground. I recently went to Columbus for a, for a retreat for all of the Democratic nominees that won their primaries for state house, and talking to all of these candidates. Some of them were first time candidates. Some of them were incumbents who had been in office for years. We are all on the exact same page, and we are going to take back our state. Obama won our state twice, and then Trump won our state twice. That is a shift that we are trying to reverse as quickly as possible. But I can tell you, with races like mine, there are 99 state house districts in the state of Ohio. If each of us in our state house districts work to push the vote to move the needle, then I can tell you that folks like Tim Ryan, folks like Nan Whaley, they're going to win their races because of the work we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. I think people people always forget about these down ballot races, and really because you're running these big Senate Senate campaigns that across the whole state, you don't really have the the, the chance to get in there and have the face time with every voter in a district, right? Um, and so that's why it's really important for those local guys, those down ballot folks, to really uplift uh, other candidates in the Democratic Party and in the Democratic branding. And one of the things I think is is really kind of cool about you, Sam, is that you are unafraid to call people out on their shit. Um, and this is what I, I get all the time about like, oh, we can't we can't stoop to their level and we can't, you know, name call and this and that. And I'm just like, you know what, if a person's corrupt, they're corrupt. Yep. That's um, I don't know how any other way to, to, to call it. And I think that is one of the things that I, I have have loved watching you do people out on their shit and uh you know i i i want you to do that on the, i can't wait to watch a video of you doing it on that on the house floor um because i'm gonna be like i know that guy <laughs> and not well, and, and not yeah. only and not only republicans right but you're gonna get it from the left like jr will tell you he's getting crap from his own party right like so i yeah. absolutely am and i'm shaking my head sam keep doing it yeah. Uh, one of the things I have been saying in my race over here is Democrats are not immune to criticism, especially if it's factual and accurate. You do not get a pass because you're Democrat. You do not get a pass because of the color of your skin or your gender. It makes absolutely no sense. It, you know, my race is has been called a dumpster fire, a shit show and everything because I have called them out on their crap. Okay. Yeah. Keep I have doing called, it, Sam. I have Absolutely. called them out. I've been called a Nazi 
a fascist, a slave, and everything else under the sun. You can all in imagine. one afternoon. Yeah. So no, he, he's serious. Yeah. It's all happened in in one time. So yeah. it, it's it's nonsense. You hear the saying of people saying vote blue no matter who. Well, screw that. You can't just vote any blue. You have to find the best blue to vote. Okay. Yeah. So keep doing what you're doing. Keep calling them out. And I'm looking forward, man. Uh, you know, I, I'm excited for people like you, people like Maxwell Frost, who's running down in Florida. You know, Maxwell and I were at an event together. We've spoken on the phone many times, but we got a chance to meet. Yeah. Just seeing that energy from yeah. this next generation, yeah. it is so heartwarming to me. And it's like, hey, we got, we got a shot at this thing, you know? All hope is not lost. So, yeah. so congratulations on the hard work you're doing. Proud of you. Uh, and don't take anybody's shit, okay? Yeah. <laughs> because sometimes within your own party, they will try to screw you over. They will lie to you. Don't trust anyone. Make them earn that trust. And I think that's what's so important about this campaign we're running is I I'm assuming none of us are huge Liz Cheney fans, but what I can praise Liz Cheney for is that when it mattered most, she chose country over party. And that's what we have to do. Uh, on the left as well. If we disagree with our own party about something, like my good friend Tim Ryan does all the time, he stays true to himself, he fights for his values, and that's what I intend to do. Uh, back to your point, Lauren, about calling out the bullshit. Um, yeah, frankly, my opponent has a lot of it. She's had two scandals in two terms. She is saying things and sponsoring bills left and right that are not popular amongst the general population. So there is a difference between straight up name calling for no reason but then you have to take uh, into consideration, we need to educate people about what is going on. If she took a $52,000 bribe in broad daylight, we need to be blasting that over the airwaves. We can't hold yeah. back. So yeah. we have to be nice and we can't stoop to their level to an extent. We also do have to, like you said, call them out. If she took a $52,000 bribe, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to start, but I just want to say quick, if she took a $52,000 bribe in broad daylight, imagine how many she's taken in the behind closet the, behind closed doors yeah. absolutely yeah. and that is the entire point of our campaign which is that i want to work for the people not for myself she has used her elected office as a a tool for her own self-worth and for her own self-interest that is all she is worried about and it's have unfortunate you, it really is I got, I got a question for you sam have you looked at her net worth from when she started to what it is now, how much it has grown. I haven't. I have not looked at the chains. I, I the change between. Uh, I know she is a millionaire. She owns three houses, uh, two here in the district, um, and I actually was canvassing in her neighborhood the other day and decided to wave and see if she was looking out her window. But uh, yeah, I have not looked at the change <laughs> in her net wealth worth. Although, as I think I mentioned earlier. She signs her bills, Sarah P. Carruthers. So when she signs it with her middle name, can anybody guess what that P stands for? Oh, it st it stands for Proctor, Sarah Proctor Carruthers, as in Proctor oh. and Gamble. So uh, she comes from immense wealth, like oh. more than one can comprehend. And she has been a she and her family have been uh, into philanthropy in the city of Hamilton for a very long time. And for that, I am thankful. But what we need to point out is that that does not qualify you to legislate, not in any way. Yeah. Um, Absolutely not. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. God damn it. Yes. That and you know what? I'm so sick and tired of people. Thank you, because I'm so sick and tired of people of saying shit like that. Oh well, you know, uh, your they, church they, do, they give really so kidding. much money. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, one good thing does not take away the millions of bad things, and vice versa. And we need to stop doing this. Absolutely. As Americans, we need to thank. God damn it! Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really important to point out. It I'm is. Yeah. I'm, I'm, so I, I, I imagine, you know, at the state level, uh, one of the things that is kind of front of mind for folks, uh, and this is really kind of how people vote, um, at least the, the motivator for me, is the, the economic outlook uh, of folks. How would you say um, the last year or so has, has looked in – uh, the area you're trying to represent, and what are some things that um, you would like to work on uh, to change the or improve the economics of folks 
uh, in your area? Yeah, and that's a great question. And that's why I like Tim Ryan so much. He's uh, whenever you talk to him, whenever you see him, what's he focused on? Workers, workers, workers are working families. How do we get them out of this hole? And, and he's and he's dang right. I mean, I've been around my community this past year. I've seen people there again. In, and I'm going to use the line my friend Nan Whaley likes to always say. But right now, uh, your wages going th- are going down and your bills are going up here in Ohio and across the nation. We need to change that. That starts by raising the minimum wage here in Ohio, and that ends with things as simple as clean energy. Those can spur business development, especially in a fairly rural and suburban district like mine. There are projects that would renew the the main and the front streets of Hamilton and Oxford, the cities here, as well as it's as simple as giving our workers a tax cut. Uh, You see, not just in the federal, uh, in the U.S. House and the U.S. Senate, but in state houses across the nation, uh, billionaires and millionaires are finding loopholes and not paying their fair share in taxes due to these uh, these legislators that are held up by special interests like my opponent. It is completely unacceptable. So first of all, uh, to to help with this, and I see the website flashing on the bottom of the screen there, so thank you for that. But um, to remedy this this economic downturn due to COVID, first of all, what we have to do is is notice our workers and realize Ohio has the best damn workers in the country. They are the backbone of our economy. They keep Ohio moving. We need to make things here. We've made glass in Toledo, and and it is absolutely essential that we start treating them with dignity. So first of all, I got to win this race and root out the corruption because when you have uh, public officials taking bribes into office they're not working in the interest of the people they're working for themselves. Then we can get into the bread and butter, the kitchen table issues, what we can do to relieve some of the stress, because it doesn't help pretending like everything's okay when it's not. Yes, well, that's true. Um, that's absolutely true. My friend, Chelsea, I have a, a friend of mine, Chelsea Clark, who's running um, in Ohio for uh, secretary of state, I think is what she's running. I know Chelsea quite well, yes. Um, and and we've kind of had this discussion about just the state overall and the, the politics of the state and, um, you know, areas like around Columbus, you know, Upper Arlington, uh, Worthington area, yeah. uh, you know, college towns like Youngstown and, and uh, University of Ohio, uh, Miami, those are going to be Democratic strongholds. Are there areas in your In your district, obviously, it's currently represented by a Republican. But are those areas where you've been able to uh, go out and meet folks who are Republican or who are uh, on the other side and kind of said, you know what, I I agree with what you're saying and, and you've got my vote? Absolutely. That's one of the things I'm most proud of about my campaign is we're reaching out to Democrats, Republicans and independents. There is a surprising to, I think, anyone amount of common sense Republicans that my campaign has talked to. We've knocked on their doors. We've reached them where they are, which is something that campaigns in the past year haven't done. And again, the the town of Oxford, where Miami University is, is a nice blue dot. I've got a few townships which are very red. And then I've got the city of Hamilton. Hamilton is the 10th biggest city in Ohio. It's huge. Um, But the problem is people haven't gotten out there before. There hasn't been an organized campaign running in Hamilton. What we're also doing is going out to these townships and strategically extracting the votes that we can get. I talked to a man yesterday. He was sitting on his porch. He voted for Donald Trump. And at the end of the conversation, he had assured me that I would have his vote. I mean, these are things, if we get out to these people where they are, talk talk to them about the issues that matter to them, instead of, like my opponent, just pretty much thinking you can walk into office without even having the campaign, that makes people notice. There are small towns all across my district, Scipio, Bunker Hill, Millville, College Corner. These are all tiny little communities. They've never had a Democrat or a Republican politician knock on their door. It's insane. And so again, that is all, uh, that is what we are about. We are getting into those areas that may have been kind of forgotten in the past, whether it's by our politics or by our candidates, reaching out to them, getting them registered if they're not Um, But yeah, I'm very proud of the Republican support we've gained. And that's another reason why I think we're going to win this race. I think uh, the common sense Republicans are done with Sarah's corruption. Question. Well, uh, I have to. I'm being pulled into another meeting. It was great. I have to jump off. All right, Sam. uh, Good luck, my friend. Okay. Great meeting, JR. You as well. Uh, Yeah, we'll we'll stay in touch, sir. Yes, stay in touch. Y'all have a great night. 
Good night. Yeah. I have a question for you, Sam, related to what you just said, please. Absolutely. Um, so it sounds to me like there's some miles going on the car with this campaign. How are you funding it? Yeah, so I love talking about this. So uh, if you look at my, uh, if you look at our average donation, our average contribution is $38 uh, for a state representative campaign. That is amazing. We are bringing in this, and, and I'm sure you guys see me on Twitter and I see you guys, but we are making this campaign a nationwide campaign. And as much as that sounds, yes, we are out here in the district every single day fighting for our constituents, but also when we bring into the fold all of these politically active people across the nation who want to see change and who might see something inspiring against this uh, this establishment candidate and Sarah Carruthers who, who lives and breathes corruption, they're intrigued. And so we're getting donations from uh, within my district, across the state and across the nation. It is mostly small dollar donations from our from our outreach, whether that be ads or, or social media. But um, if you look at my opponent's campaign, so she's raised uh, about $100,000. So as I said, that bribe she took, that made up uh, about half of her fundraising to, uh, to run just... against me. And then the other, the other half is made up of donations that are mostly over $1,000 uh, from the Butler County GOP's big donor base that they have. And again, this is a reason why nobody wants to run for these races, because they think they're predetermined. Right. That is absolutely wrong and i'm so excited to prove everybody wrong here i really am good 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 for you i have to roll out um because i got an hour but um i just want to say thank you i'm going to hit you up separately um i want to work on some stuff with you so uh if you if, if you'd be open to it um absolutely. so to, to try to help you out some more um since you're in the general so lauren thanks brother for letting me jump in um you're in good yeah, hands absolutely. with lauren. i will see you guys later and sam good luck brother Talk to you, Jason. Thank you. Nice. So, Sam, I have a, a like a really pragmatic question uh, yeah. because you know you're. I'm sure you've dealt with all of it now at this point. But 19, you got a term paper due on the War of 1812 at midnight. You're you got a, a house a, 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 a house vote going on that's also getting into the wee hours of midnight. Um, how, how are you going to make these two kind of worlds fit together? Do you have a plan for that? Or are we, or... Absolutely. Yeah. And I would not have gotten into this race if I didn't fully believe in myself and my team to be able to pull through. So many people in my situation running for state representative actually have full-time jobs, which is something that a lot of people don't realize. Uh, me being a full-time student, uh, yes, I am. But uh, a lot of people have to juggle uh, another side of life with campaigns. I mean, you know that. Um <laughs> as well as the fact that, so I talked to my advisors here at Miami, obviously they said, we've never had anything like this before at Miami University, but uh, if I plan to win, they will be helping me out uh, to be able to take my classes while I do legislate. But for the campaign side of things, usually state representative races are run by, I would reckon under 10 people. Um, our campaign, both paid staff and super volunteers, has almost 60 staff members on it, oh, which wow. for a state representative race is is really, really notable. And that is not only just helping with knocking doors and texting and making phone calls, but emailing, sending out postcards, doing letters, having huge fundraisers and events, registering students here at Miami to vote. Um, so the good thing is I have this really strong, really large team behind me who I can, who I know will always have my back. So school comes first. Obviously I'm in this, I decided I wanted to get my education here at Miami. I intend to follow through with that. Um, but, but because of the support I've gotten from this amazing, wonderful team I have behind me, that allows me to, to kind of broaden my interests and in, in campaign and do schoolwork at the same time. Nice. That is, that's, is, that's is incredible. Um, one thing that I, I, I wanted to, to kind of talk to you about and, and kind of get your opinion on is this um, what's going on in all these different different state houses of, of the passing uh, these laws that restrict uh, abortion. I know Ohio is going through um, some of that as we speak where I, where, where do you think that we can find common ground on this? Do you think there's common ground to be found on this issue? 
at all because I, I feel like we just had an issue um, here in, in my town. We had uh, one of our state representatives um, uh, able to free up $9 million that needed to go through, be approved by this pass-through uh, through the city to go to Planned Parenthood here um, with the majority of those funds going being slated for cancer screening, 90-something right. percent of it. Um, when we had this big uh, uh, city council meeting that just went on and on, and people were not – we had people opposed to, to it, people who were like, yes, this is helping pe- residents in our community, uh, the poorest residents in our community. Um, how do you think we can, we can be Democrats and support choice – but be able to to kind of look for for common ground on this issue with folks who see it as um, well that don't see it in, in, as in a positive light that we do. Say that. Right, right, and I think that's important to ask because I, I fundamentally believe below all the politics and below all the games, there is more that that brings us together and that that uh, puts us really, really um, makes us have things in common than there is that separates us. I truly, truly believe that. Um, The first thing I'll mention with this point is that I found a bit of a phenomenon going on recently where I have talked to a lot of people who consider themselves Republicans and say they are pro-life. And then they go on to explain that that, um, they are personally against abortion, wouldn't get an abortion, but for other people. And then what I say to them is that means you're pro-choice. You know that, right? And I think a lot of people don't want to realize that. um, But at the very bottom line, first of all, to give you kind of a synopsis here, there is zero reason why the government should be intruding on a woman's private health decisions there should be a doctor and her family in that room advising her, no one else, not the government. And I think if you take it, uh, the Republican Party has chosen so many of its candidates, especially for offices like Senate, uh, like the U.S. Senate, like governorships, but all the way down to the state level where they have taken the most extreme positions in Ohio. uh, There are laws being considered that would ban abortion in all cases with no exceptions for (laughs) rape incest or even the life of the mother um there have been cases now since roe is overturned of ectopic pregnancies which uh is is something that this requires a a medical intervention to save the woman's life at at that point it is no longer the woman's choice um to have that procedure done and there have been doctors here in ohio who will not do it because they are scared they will get prosecuted we are devolving this this is causing our society to devolve in, in, in a way that obviously I've never seen before, but most people uh, have been alive and, and Roe has been the law of the land their entire life. Uh, this, has been, this was settled precedent that the Supreme Court justices lied under oath and said they would not change. Yeah. Um, but yeah. apart from that, how can, we, how can we figure this out? I think so many Republicans are looking at Democrats and they like to call us baby killers and First of all, nobody is pro-abortion. Abortion is a terrible, terrible decision that in most cases people do not want to make. This is a decision that is either for the health and the well-being of the life of the mother uh, or because that baby is born into a situation uh, where it would not thrive. But again, uh, we can debate on the abortion issue, but once you get into the uh, having no exceptions for the life of the mother for for ectopic pregnancies and similar medical complications where this is standard practice that is insanity to me uh it is and i'm sure it is to you too it is astounding how there is one party focused solely on taking away as many of your rights as possible and one doing the opposite right we gotta uh, we really have to make that an issue and kind of highlight it i i you know, I've, I've talked with with Brent about this, and we kind of go back and forth about making that a focus 
and if that is really something that's going to energize Republicans or energize Democrats. But, you know, like you said, I think we got to, you know, lean into our values uh, on this, especially. And I think if we can't if we can't make the case that, you know, it is not the government who should be involved in this decision, uh, that it's between a person and their their health professional, then I think we don't need to be involved in any other <laughs> conversations Absolutely. if we can't make and that argument. Absolutely. And that's that's the personal side of it. And then you take I'm going to be everybody um, in the Democratic Party within the past two weeks and bring up Kansas. I mean, come on. Right. Put it on the yeah. ballot in any state. If, if it can happen in Kansas, it can and will happen in any state. There is no doubt that this country is a pro-choice country, that Ohio is a pro-choice state. And then you have people that keep making the argument. You say, well, you know, you can't have it at the federal level. Leave it up to the states. Well, you like, can't leave it up to the states. Let's do county. Well, you can't leave it up to the county level. So let's do local government and city government. And, and by that time, you're already down to the individual person. Well, we so, can't. We'll do it to by everyone's house. Well, I guess you can't do it by, <laughs> right. let's do it by every room. Yeah. So, so it's an individual yeah. choice, you're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. So, Sam, I, 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 I'm just going to gonna kind of wrap it up here. Um, you know, have you thought about the future at all? Uh, win or lose this this race? What does what does five years down the line look like for you? Yeah, I get this question pretty often and fair enough, because well, I guess I, 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 wait, I guess that's going to be. Six years down the line, because at 25, you can run for house. Right. Oh, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be quite honest with you, Lauren, I have no earthly idea. Um, what I can tell you is you and, and listeners watching this, um, you can expect to see a lot more from me. Uh, but right now, as, as things stand right now, my focus is solely and entirely on flipping this district because I've known campaigns who run to run. They run in the district that they don't think they could win. They run in the district so there is a candidate there. And I want to emphasize that is not what is happening here. We are running because we can win. Um, and right now, 100% of my effort is focused into that. I love politics. I love public service. And you can probably, um, I, I would wager you'd be seeing me around in this sphere. I will be active for a long time for what comes specifically in the future, whether it's another race, whether it's working somewhere, I have no idea. But um, I, again, like I said, the experience. What is, let's say, what does mom and dad have to say about it? What, what, yeah. what is their take on it? They were cautiously optimistic at first. They were a little apprehensive when I told them, hey, my, you know, halfway through my freshman year of college, I'm going to start running a campaign. <laughs> um, but I, I, you know, I ran the campaign all of last, my last semester. And I think once I proved that I could, do college and I could also run this campaign. They became extremely supportive and they'd always been supportive. They are amazing. Um, they've given me so much advice, so much support, but um, they're always making sure I'm, I'm focusing on school and keeping that in mind as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Sam, go ahead and give us your, your wrap up here. How can yeah. folks get in, get in contact with you, help out? And, and what do you kind of need from us? Absolutely. Yeah. So anyone watching this, first of all, thank you again for having me on, Lauren. It was it was an absolute pleasure. Um, I've been again, wanting to talk to you for so long. I just I needed to find the time. To yeah, I'm, absolutely. I get we're all busy and we got 79 days till Election Day, so it's only going to get busier. But um, if you want to find me, you can find me at samforohio.com. Uh, you can donate at sl4oh.win or you can find me on any social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Snapchat, we've got uh, Twitter, obviously, but also we will be having TikTok coming up uh, here soon. We are on social media. Our reach is great, but also how you guys can help me. If you live in the district, in the 47th district in Southwest Ohio, or you have family members or friends who do, please do not hesitate to let them know about my campaign, as well as uh, we are taking volunteers and interns from all across the country. If you've ever wanted to work on a political campaign, doing something as simple as phone banking, please, please, please go to our website. There are plenty of places to get involved. But like I said, my name's Sam Lawrence. I'm a 19-year-old sophomore at Miami University running to unseat Sarah Carruthers. She's the incumbent for the 47th House District. Two scandals in two terms. And I am so, so excited to beat her this November. Yes, excellent. 
One last, let's see here. There's one last comment in the chat here. Yeah, I just don't understand why we don't have 10,000 people in the room right now. Come on, man. All your friends got to be on Twitch. But there you go. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, that, that's, Twitch is a, I, I, ha, I, I, I game. I, I'm a gamer. That's how I get in my downtime. Uh, that's how I detox from the world. Uh, so I just, I, 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 live stream my gaming but i don't have like the like a rig set up and like cameras like all these these like the twitch streamers do i gotta get a room with the like the panels in the back the, too the cool lights and all that yeah i need i need a uh, a game cave absolutely yeah say it loud enough that my wife can hear me a game cave <laughs> for christmas maybe um <laughs> no, but I think that's one of the best things about our campaign is when I started this campaign, I was told by a few advisors, don't worry about social media, it won't do anything for you. And I recognize that social media alone can't win you a campaign, but holy hell, can it give you a boost and can it give your oh, campaign yeah. life? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. If you had people giving you advice not to lean into the social media, uh, I wouldn't take their advice anymore. <laughs> I, well, I didn't. And here we are. So <laughs> There it is. All yeah. right. Sam Lawrence, Ohio's 47th. Uh, is it the the lower the uh, state reps? house state yes. house was it just called state, state house, house? Okay. representatives so for the for the state house 47th district thanks for coming on sam thanks so much for having me lauren it was a pleasure and you can catch us again same bat channel same bat time at 5:30 on sunday evenings take it easy <laughs>